And as the clock chimes, welcome back to the Hotel Ortloff here in Scenic Rural Retreat, Virginia. Scenic Rural Retreat, Virginia, the home of Dr. Pepper, the Civil War surgeon who opened a drugstore and invented Dr. Pepper. One of his employees stole the formula, took it to Texas, and was nice enough to name it after Dr. Pepper, but we all know who the real creator is, and he was buried seven miles from here, seven miles and 37 feet from where we're standing is the grave of Dr. Pepper, ladies and gentlemen. And Dr. Pepper is one of our sponsors here at the Hotel Orloff. So welcome back to the Grotu Orloff Show. I think it's episode 1006 here on YouTube, but it's probably going to be the first episode on Rumble. I'm going to try to Finally, experiment with uh, getting on Rumble, and uh, uh, just YouTube starting to drive me a little bit batty. So, once again, Dr. Pepper, take it from me, and Donna Lauren, and Dick Clark, and Richard Speck, Dr. Pepper is today's light and lively taste, and it's one of our sponsors here on the Gratu Orloff television program. So... This morning, doing a live stream with some of my pals, Meyer Greenblatt from San Francisco, and we had uh, Kevin Johnson from Gotham City Comics in Mesa, Arizona, and a bunch of wonderful people in the chat. And I was, uh, we, were, we were looking, you know, we're, who, who is Dr. Gratu Arloff, you ask, those of you that are new to this channel, as I relaunch it on Rumble. Um... I'm a collector of many things. I collect mid-century Americana, um, but mostly things that would have appealed to children and teenagers in the 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s. That's what's entertaining to me. And so uh, usually it's the kind of things that parents weren't too crazy about and tended to throw away, like comic books and toys and Rock and roll records and uh, movie posters for horror films that were frowned upon by parents, you know, all of that stuff. And uh, we love uh, dogs, don't we, Drew the dog? This is Drew Silla the dog. And so we come to you every so often from the Hotel Orloff to talk about rock and roll culture and comic books, and horror movies, and everything that makes life worth uh, living. Yes, yes, indeed. Um, so, anyway, it was a pretty good show, but, uh, oh, I didn't tell you what happened. I was, uh, I was showing some toys this morning, and uh, I showed a two squirt guns, plastic squirt guns that... Uh, one was one from my childhood that's almost snapped in half, and I was asking my friend, how do I repair this? Do I use Gorilla Glue? Because I've got some Gorilla Glue. He says, no, don't use Gorilla Glue on plastic. It'll change the color of the plastic. It's going, Oof, I'm glad you told me that. So he's telling me the type adhesive to heal my childhood squirt gun. It's a plastic squirt gun. But back then, in, you know, in the world of 1970, they didn't have plastic, uh, they didn't have the little red or orange tips on the end of uh, uh, toy G's. Let's call them G's because uh, YouTube, you know. <laughs> anyway, so I was showing that and some other little squirt G, U N that I've had for years. And um, before long, within five minutes, my stream was gone and I had it in, in, in off the air and I had an email in my Gmail from uh, YouTube saying that the stream had been taken down because you're not allowed to be shown handling a F-arm. And uh, so, you know, I tried to, how do I, how do I send, because the AI had detected an F-arm, right? So I, I tried, how do I, how do I communicate? It's just a bunch of AI chatbots. So how do I explain, hey, these are toys. I'm not, you know, some crazy nut. And, um, uh, so I don't know how to communicate with them. But apparently, I, I can't stream for 90 days 
But the 90 days starts when I, I guess I do some little, um, I must have to watch some little video and answer some questions that I understand their policies. So anyway, uh, I don't even, and they, I don't know how to do that. So apparently uh, I paid for StreamYard, the deluxe StreamYard, but I can't stream again until um, 90 days from taking a uh, some little quiz, which I, I, I shouldn't have to do. I was showing... Uh, Showing a toy, but apparently this new uh, restriction started uh, in the middle of June, just a couple of weeks ago. So if you have toy G's, uh, don't show them. I was showing a Star Trek tracer toy tracer gun the other day, but that didn't apparently get me in trouble. But uh, I don't know, man. I, I'm going to call YouTube and. Yeah, because I found the phone number for YouTube. I, I researched around, and there's that they actually have a phone number. Hey, hey, Bob. Bob is Bob runs YouTube. Hey, how you doing? Yeah, my uh, stream got taken down this morning, man. I did. Oh, by the, it was yeah, it was it was the strike. It was a warning, but a warning means I can't stream again for ninety days, which means I've wasted money on Streamyard. Oh, you say you can use StreamYard on Rumble? Uh, nope. All right, so I may be uh, maybe having to do my live streams over there on the uh, Rumble. Uh, that you know, okay, okay, well, uh, goodbye, uh, Bob. Uh, moron. Actually, you can't get through to YouTube. I wish it was that easy. There's no way to call them. They have no phone number. They only have a fax number. Who has faxes nowadays? So... Some of you are pretty glad I can't stream, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, I bet you're you're pretty uh, pretty glad. <laughs> I wonder if one of them was you know. Wonder if it wasn't an AI. What if it was one of those people that were? Uh, no, that couldn't be. That couldn't be. <laughs> that would be ridiculous. But um, anyway, we were um, going through stuff and talking about wonderful things like uh, comic books and all that stuff, and uh, toys, and James Bond movies, but uh, anyway, I don't know, um, when YouTube stops being fun and becomes a chore, then I have to take a little quiz, are you kidding me, you aren't paying me any money, YouTube, and, oh, and the other thing YouTube's been doing is unsubscribing me from all my friends, and then I can't subscribe, that's another crazy thing that they've been doing, oh, wow, We. I was just showing my, my, my wife the movie Patton, and here, look at this, War As I Knew It, General George S. Patton, Jr., the Battle Memoirs of Blood and Guts, and uh, look here, we're in the we're in the gift uh, the gift shop of the Hotel Orloff. You can also uh, get uh, Douglas Mac MacArthur's uh, uh, little rememberings and uh, Gulliver of Mars, a long lost classic of Martian. Adventure. The original title was Lieutenant Gulliver Jones. This is this predates the John Carter books that Edgar Rice Burroughs wrote. But um, trust me, the John Carter books are far better, far better. But this this is the John Carter books. Barsoom. That's the Martian name for Mars. Um, this is a 1970s edition of one of the the books about Mars. Oh, it's so wonderful looking at um, all the books for sale here in the gift shop of the Hotel Orloff. This is one of my favorite books of all time, Inside Mad with the Harvey Kurtzman Mad uh, reprints. Well, look at this. You know what's coming to Rural Retreat? It's Bella Lugosi's coming in person with the Horror and Magic stage show. They've already got the posters up here. And look at this big uh, banner here for it. It's, it's unbelievable. 
Well, so I guess what I should do is get back to what I was doing in the live stream which was, uh, I was going through a bunch of stuff, and I said, hey, man, I've got some cool stuff to show you. And then the live stream gets cut because I violated the, the, the terms of whatever. <laughs> so, oh, brother. I'm an innocent man. I was just showing a toy gun. It, beco it becomes more and more a George Orwell world every day. We're afraid to say things. We're afraid they've made us where we cower and uh, cower in fear to uh, say anything. Um, but I must say to you, ladies and gentlemen, here on the Rumble platform, there aren't as many restrictions. And uh, perhaps things will be better in a few short months, ladies and gentlemen. So, yes, indeed. Let's, uh, let's look at what I was about to show everybody when YouTube so rudely interrupted my live stream. So, anyway, go over to Rumble. I've had a Rumble channel for a long time, but I've never uploaded anything to it because it was always a, a pain but uh, this morning I uploaded a video. It was only a two-minute video. But um, just to see if I could do it. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, if you go, uh, uh, just search Gr just Gratu. G-R-O-T-T-U. I can't figure out how to change the name of the channel. It's going to be the only Gratu on, uh, on Rumble. And uh, subscribe. <laughs> I've got three subscribers. I mean, I've been trying so darn hard for five years to get to a thousand subscribers here on YouTube, really. And I'm only up to seven hundred and fifty something. And I, I can't. I don't think I'll ever break eight hundred. And of course, you got to get to a thousand to to make any money. And he said, "Well, you know." You only get like thirty dollars a month from YouTube. Hey, man, I could use thirty dollars a month. I've got some a lot of comic books on hold over at Mesa, Arizona, at Kevin Johnson's amazing store, and I need. I would. I could use thirty dollars a month. Sorry, uh, I have a very inferior tripod. I have to bend the legs. It's all. So, <laughs> so uh, it's been a horrible day, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, look at this. It's a press book for the, these two fine family films. Two great blood horrors to rip out your guts. I drink your blood and I eat your skin. They're not going to show these on Sven Gooley tonight. Anyway, this has got some water damage at the bottom. It's, uh, but uh, I've had this since the 1980s. And trust me, uh, it's quite wonderful. These are ad mats, so this is like what you... you <laughs> You could put in your local newspaper to advertise. You know, this was a movie about like a Charles Manson kind of cult that were eating people. But I Eat Your Skin is actually a black and white voodoo movie that was a little bit older. But it was a fine double bill. And see, they have what, what the, this is called a press book. And so it's got all the different size ads that you could use to advertise your films that were coming up at a theater near you. So that's that. What is this? Nah, we don't want to look at that. Look at this. Here's something I did in, what grade was I in? March 14th, 1980. Well, that was a few years ago. I, I did a poster, I guess, in art class for Carlsbad Caverns. Open weekdays. Look at this. Uh, you can tell I was reading EC Comic uh, reprints. It says, Frank, we've landed on the wrong planet. Believe it or not, this isn't Mars. We've landed back in New Mexico. So that's like a little Planet of the Apes twist ending. How about that? What grade did I get on this? 
nine decades ago. I don't see a grade. Can I, yeah. Period one, March 14th, 1980. Wow, astounding. Why well, look, it's a kitchen sink press mail order catalog from fall, winter, 1989. That's a nice art on there. Will Eisner, Al Cap. Well, I used to say Milton Kniff, but then I was wondering, is it Milton Kniff? I, yeah. One of those things, I'm not really sure. Ernie Bushmiller, Robert Crumb, look at all that. Alex Raymond, they got all the great artists. Will Elder, one of my favorites. Look at that. Um, yeah, they were reprinting these little Abner books. I've got that upstairs. Yeah, little Abner, great stuff. Greatest compliment, one of the greatest compliments I've ever been paid is when my sixth grade elementary teacher um, said that, was telling another teacher that my artwork looked a lot like uh, Al Cap's artwork, um, the artist of little Abner, which of course, it's ridiculous. There's an example of Al Cap's art, but that's a heck of a compliment. Um, and it turned out her son was a cartoonist as well. So that's probably how she knew the name Al Cap, because you know, the average person, you know, would know the name little Abner, but not Al Cap. And of course, no one would know the name little Abner now, but in 1976, 77, a lady that's in her 50s would know a little louder. I'm getting a lot of comments popping up, but I can't read them. I'm on my I'm using my phone here. Um, okay, what do we got here? What is this little? It's a little memo book. Oh, but this is not my memo book. This is my father's. And this is strange. What is my dad doing here? What is he doing? I've never looked at this, and it's very strange. Um, he's got, it, it's got like uh, the names of kinds of medicine. And then on the next page, it's just like says, Jules Verne predictions, tied Tide washing powder, mercury motor, Clorox bleach, Johnson outboard, accordion, Zippo lighter, Rolls Royce auto made in England. And then he's got all these, maybe it's just him. I don't know, names of cars, names of types of martial arts. Actors, general, and it has Ed Sullivan show. It says in Army, 25 months, six days, joined April 1917. Is that, is he talking about Ed Sullivan was in the Army that long? And then he has a, a page that says building materials, sheetrock. Uh, oh, well, then it says. Erskine Caldwell, Tobacco Road, Ratio Alger, Boy Stories. You know what I think he was doing? Yeah, I know. 
my dad did crossword puzzles all the time. And I think he was writing stuff down that he found in crossword puzzles that he could maybe use later. It's like a cheat sheet for crossword puzzles. This looks old. The pages are turning, of course, but it could be an old book that my dad wrote in more recently when, at, when, when he was when older and in not too good at health. He did crossword puzzles all the time to sharpen his mind, and I think that's what's going on. But to me now, it just looks very strange. It's got people, Franklin Delano and Eleanor Roosevelt, uh, Ralph Josky's television, Guy Lombardo, music, The Sight of Heaven. Anyway, you're, you're not concerned with, I mean, you don't care. You're here to see comic books because, you know, you're probably not going to see any today because I'm doing, I'm organizing stuff. I've got this bin I'm filling with old newspapers and stuff. But I, in the meantime, um, here's a birthday card my wife got for me. She managed to combine two of my loves, Frankenstein's Monster and, you know, old microphones, rock and roll. Perfect choice uh, for that. And, and this is a card I got for my wife. You can tell that she has far better taste. And <laughs> why I have these, I don't know. Oh, this is an original drawing from my friend George. I mean, his his name is Jorge. But, you know. He's my age, and he grew up in the 70s, so is it, it, in Texas, is he going to want to correct every single teacher and everybody in elementary school and say, actually, it's pronounced Jorge? No, he's just going to say, hey, just call me George. But anyway, he, he drew this, and uh said, well, why do I care about your friend, Jorge? Well, let me tell you that, that my friend is now... He does all that advertising for the Six Flags Corporation. He's a pretty well-off commercial artist. So, <laughs> But this probably was college or high school. I've got some of his artwork around here. I save everything. And, uh, of course, this should be framed. I'm going to put this over here. I was showing this earlier, but that stream got taken down. Did you know the U.S. Navy captured a Captured a monster in Lake Michigan. Look at that thing, man. You know it's true because it's it's uh, printed here. But will the mainstream media let you know this? No, they won't. Look at this. You know, that controversy about golf, the Biden and Trump were arguing about, you know, golf the other day you know, look look at this can you imagine the so violent these people are so violent okay here's more artwork i don't know who drew this but it's quite spectacular i'll put this with the other artwork here here's a drawing drawn by uh, a student of mine, a sixth grade, I don't know if he was sixth or seventh grade. This is a Martian, a, a Thark warrior, probably Tars Tarkas. I used to uh, read A Princess of Mars, the first of those Edgar Rice Burroughs Martian books I was telling you about with my students, and they would draw illustrations to show that they were paying attention to the book. And, uh, here's one by, done by a young lady, look at this. There's a, a young Martian woman, say, and there's Sarkoja. And uh, the young Martian woman, that was the good, the, 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 she was the heroine. She was the, the daughter of Tars Tarkas, who was a good, noble warrior and friend of John Carter, the guy that came from Earth. 
but Sarkoja was the mean, horrible one. And of course, that's a normal sized person. She's a Martian, but she's uh, one of the, they look like pe people from Earth, but they had uh, reddish skin. And her name is Deja Thoris. Yeah. I don't know if you're familiar with these books, but they're a lot of fun. How about that? There's a picture of my beautiful wife. I ought to put that in a frame. She's wearing a Lily Monster wig. Oh my gosh, my gosh. Here is an actual autograph photo of Debbie Reynolds. This is uh, really signed by her. Debbie Reynolds is wonderful. If you've never seen the movie Singing in the Rain, you need to watch that this evening. It is one of the greatest films of all time. And of course, some of you uh, know her as Princess Leia's mother. That was terrible a few years ago. It was uh, right before Christmas. I mean, I think we were on our way to see my wife Cleo's family down in Houston, and we heard that Carrie Fisher had died. You know, uh, Debbie Reynolds was the mom, and Eddie Fisher who was a popular singing star, was her father, and and uh, she played Princess Leia, and um, but she she passed away, and then the mother uh, Debbie Reynolds. Uh, died, uh, I think maybe two, not more than three days later. She couldn't take it. I mean, she was an elderly lady and her daughter died. I mean, imagine, it's like, a, yeah, that was horrible, man. That was a kind of, that was horrible. All right. Now, is one of these original? No. This is, um, uh, an, Autographed picture of Gene Summers, who was a rockabilly guy. And it's autographed, it was back in 2013. This is 11 years ago. He's since passed on. I made these copies of the original photograph that he autographed to my wife and myself. Because if you look at it, you see the photograph was starting to fade. And, and it, some of these photographs, they don't keep them in the fixing solution. You know, you used to have to soak photographs and chemicals. And if they didn't stay in there long enough, they could just start fading. Um, I learned that in photography class in, in high school. Anyway, so, you know, this was important to me. So I made some copies on thick stock at the copy shop. Um, and this is what I, ha I have framed one like this, but the original is, is around here somewhere. So um, why did he autograph this? Because I, I was at an estate sale down the street from where I used to live in Texas. Sorry about all this mess back here. I've been going through things. Um, and I found an acetate record, which is a one-of-a-kind record, right? It's, it's, uh, there's only one made, right? They record it live, right? And, and the, the grooves are, are cut as they're performing live. And it was of... It was uh, Gene Summers was in some band and they made a acetate so they could uh, an acetate record so that they could give it to the owners of Dairy Queen or whatever place where they, their band wanted to play so they could hear what their band sounded like. So Gene Summers was on vocals and they did Searchin' the Coasters song and um, the other side I don't remember. I have a copy of that record, but I, I bought the acetate and it said vocals Gene Summers and I put a picture of it up on what I found on YouTube and I bought it for like a dollar fifty maybe. And um all these record collectors all over it, this word spread that uh a new record, new old record from Gene Summers uh had been discovered. You can look up Gene Summers on, on YouTube and listen to his music. He was a rockabilly, rock and roll guy back in the 50s and 60s. And, uh, you know, it was a big deal for something to be discovered like that. And, and kind of historic for people into cool music, you know. And that's the kind of music I like. One of my favorite types of music. So, anyway, the word got to Gene Summers and his son who lived in Dallas. And uh, he came over to the house and listen to that record that he hadn't heard since, you know, 1957, 58. And uh, I think he gave, I think he wrote a check for $100, $150, which I said, no. And he insisted I take it. I said, maybe it was $100. It, it, he, just, 
He's since passed away, but you know, I that's I was gonna give it to him free. I, I told him that, but he insisted because I only paid a dollar fifty, man. But uh, and it belongs to him. It's his stuff, you know. So that was a neat thing. Here's a dang, holy cats. Here's a picture of me. This has got to be. I would say this is around. 2006. Look at that. Look how I've changed. I, uh, <laughs> I've gone gray. It's shocking. I still have the same bags under my eyes that I did back then. Incredible, huh? I, um, here's a little promotional flyer for two Elvis Presley movies. Or, no. For one Elvis Presley movie, Double Trouble. It opens up. Yes, indeed. How about that? This is... What is this? Oh. It's a flyer for a book. Um... Uh, Science Fiction and the Golden Age, Volume 1, now available. PayPal to... Oh, this is James Van Hyes. I wonder if you could still get this book. I should have got... Look at this. It's... It, this is a page from Boys Magazine, October 28th, 1933. And look at that wonderful illustration of King Kong. It says... Uh, Look, chaps, our great souvenir number of King Kong kicks off with the thrilling, complete story of the gigantic film wonder. Oh, so it's got a, a story printed here of King Kong. Wow. This is a coffee shop I used to hang out at. Long gone. Books, coffee. It was a bookstore, coffee lounge. It had... Uh, Videotapes you could rent. This is back in the 90s in Dallas. And this is the calendar. Oh, oh I was recording David Wilcock. I got to go stop the recording. This is the same stuff I would have shown you on the live stream. It's a, it wouldn't have looked as good on the live stream. Maybe thing on StreamYard looks a little washed out. So maybe it's for the best, but I really don't like being banned from <laughs> streaming on YouTube for 90 days. And they won't even start the 90 days till I take some insulting little test. It was a toy gun, man. Oh, man. This is a show I used to work on. On TCI Cable Public Access, the Hypnotic Halloween, the Hypnotic Eye Halloween Special. And there's this, uh, this is an illustration by Joe Riley. There's, there he is, Joe Riley, 96. Starting October 25th, Friday and Saturday nights at 11 p.m. on 25B. Before there was YouTube, Really, before there was internet, if you were at a creative mind, you'd go on public access. And so what I'm doing now is kind of what I was doing with Joe Riley back in the 90s. Um, with this show, The Hypnotic Eye, I was doing a magazine called The Sophisticate. And uh, Joe Riley, this friend of mine in Dallas, uh, said, man, I want to do a, a TV version of your magazine, you know, all about monsters and old cartoons and, and, and uh, everything, you know, rock and roll. And I said, cool, well, I'll help you with it. And he decided to call it the Hypnotic Eye, which is, which the name comes from a great old uh, um, movie from the 50s. Kind of a pretty sadistic horror movie, but it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, and uh, he created this puppet 
and you can see the show. Uh, they used to have, they, they took it off YouTube for a while because there was some copywritten music, but now I, someone else has put it back up. You can see it on archive.org, the whole series. And, um, and there's several YouTube, uh, I'm sorry, several uh, Roku channels that just show this, you know, this show. Um, but this is an original flyer that he used to put around. I, I really ought to frame this. Joe Riley was a brilliant artist, and I yeah, he was great. If uh, you're fan, it, what happened with the hypnotic eye is people in Dallas saw it. It was on public access television every Saturday night, and they would record it on VHS. And before long, it spread all over the United States and the world. People trading these cassettes of the show that because we had scopatones on there, the original music videos, basically, and all kinds of stuff. Um, the one, I helped them with the early episodes, not the later ones. The one that I did the most on that I was there with them in the editing studio there at um, TCI Cable was episode two. You need, and, and uh, there was Donny Osmond puppet. That was my voice. But of course it was, my voice wasn't as raspy as it is now. But anyway, I, um, episode two, every bit of the video came from my collection and, and and i said put this here joe and then and then he would edit and he basically it was like uh, telling him okay i knew I had a vision of episode two episode two was my baby and he just did the editing according to what i told him to do the other shows have my input the early ones but uh it's that's Joe Riley's thing. Joe Riley, man, he used to make some model kits for me. He was a brilliant painter and everything. And look at this, I'll show you some of the stuff he did. He had a this may be the only one left in the world right here. He made this resin kit of the Slee stack from Land of the Lost. And uh, this is built and painted by him. And and I don't know if there are any others left. What else did Joe Riley do? Um, all, I all I have to do is kind of look around. That I um, both of these Elviras here, this one and this one, were painted by Joe Riley. Um, this Superman model kit here was painted by Joe Riley. I don't know if you're seeing that there. Um. And I have a couple of paintings that he did over here on the stairs. Um, but anyway, Joe Riley passed away. Then, and, and, uh, well, when was MySpace a thing? Uh, it's when he passed away. I got to whisper because my wife's working up here. So. Christmas tree. I was showing this on the live stream, but they, uh, you can't see the live stream now. And, uh, I'm trying to remember the stuff I showed earlier so I can recreate it this, so that you won't have missed anything. Some of you were tuned in this, this afternoon. Some of you weren't, but, uh, or this morning, whatever. I remember showing this wrestling figure. I just, I, and I was showing that I got this for a dollar ninety-five, and I bought this at that coffee shop. Well, no, there was a coffee shop, and right next to it was a toy store called Zombie, and they were run by the same two guys, uh, Alex Crow and Jason Cohen in Dallas. I got this there, and I, 
I just think he's fantastic. And then I was uh, showing this, and I said, do you guys know what wonderful motion picture this is from? And, uh, of course, Dr. Fibes was in the chat, and he says, oh, yes, that's from From Hell It Came. It, and I said, absolutely right. And then I walked over here, and I was able to show him a framed lobby card from From Hell It Came to prove that Dr. Fibes, one of the regular viewers, is actually correct. And... Unfortunately, um, see that all of that spontaneity is gone because I showed a toy G. Look at that, fantastic, huh? So, um, heaven help you if you're someone that collects toy G's or cap G's. Um, I think it's okay if you show it. And when you have a canned show like this, but if you are uh, streaming, I think they're afraid that you're going to do something bad with that G while you're streaming. You know, like you remember Bud Dwyer? <laughs> Look that name up. <laughs> that was not that uh, good. Anyway, we this wonderful Frank Frazetta art. Anyway. Man. I remember where I was when I bought this. This was exciting. In uh, the fall of 75, we thought, hey, it's going to be a new Star Trek. It's going to be like Star Trek and 2001 A Space Odyssey merged together. But it it was fun. And that theme song, I never forget the first time I heard the theme song of Space 1999. But it was... It wasn't Star Trek. Star Trek, the actors had all this... Pr Those are good actors. It was just that it was directed by people that were used to making shows with marionette puppets. And so um, a great... A sometimes a, a great actor is only as good as the director. And um, the actors, Martin Landau, Barbara Bain, uh, Barry Morris, were kind of wooden in the show. In the second season, it oh well, it only lasted two seasons, but it's a fun show. Space 1999. Oh, how about that, ladies and gentlemen? Um, how about that? <sighs> yeah. Okay, let's see what else has got over here, man. This. I need to flatten out. This is a poster, I guess, from the 1970s. I can't really tell you. Let me lay it out here on this uh, couch here. Um, I'd say it's from the North Texas area. Oh, it's even autographed. <laughs> I've got to flatten it out, get it in a frame. Um, and I have really no way of telling you what this is. It says Dr. Satanicus. Can you see that? And then it says Beast Wishes, Dr. Satanicus. I assume this is Dr. Satanicus, but Dr. Satanicus, I, I can't imagine Dr. Satanicus is, is a day over 13 or 14. In the backdrop, in the background, you've got a zombie and death. You've got a mummy. Frankenstein and the Wolfman. So I do not know what this is. I don't think it's a band. It might be maybe some haunted house thing. But uh, what I think's cool is look at that mummy there. Can you see that? Man, I, I, I don't know what you guys are seeing because the uh, way I'm holding this. Right here, where my finger is. Let me see. Where's my finger? All right, there we go. Hopefully, you're seeing this mummy. It's really cool because that guy posing as the mummy is uh, in the exact same pose as the Aurora model kit mummy here. See how he's holding his arms the same way? It's really, really pretty cool. So, uh, we'll see how this upload to Rumble goes. I may switch over and do exclusively Rumble. But, uh, 
And if the, the people don't follow me over there, if they want to stick with YouTube, well, well, we'll see. We'll see before I get too cocky with it. We'll see how it goes. I got to stop before five o'clock. And it is, it is uh, about 20 minutes till four. Um, there's uh, Drew the dog. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, how's, how are you doing, Drew the dog? Okay. Anyway. What else did Joe Riley do? Oh, Joe Riley painted this Dracula. Look how he put all that blood on him. And he, he did this uh, rat fink. And this phantom I painted, but he did this Frankenstein model kit. Look at the, look at the detail he gave this guy. Okay, back to sorting out stuff. You know, when we got cut off, this is what was happening. I was showing you, uh, the audience, that I had uh, found this. And I held it up, and I said, Paulo. Paulo's the guy that, that comes on the, the live stream a lot, and I've known him for a few years. And he's uh, he writes about cars. And I said, well, look at this. It's this Japanese... Uh, it's from a Japanese magazine showing all these great cars. And and Meyer was part of the live stream. He says, yeah, you should get that framed. And I said, well, that's... I said, wait till you see the other side. That This is not why it was saved. It was saved because I, at some point, I think from eBay, I got a collection of a bunch of clippings from Japanese magazines from 1965 December 65, when the James Bond movie Thun Thunderball came out. And so, on the other side is an actress from Thunderball, Claudine Auger. So that's why it was saved. Not because the car, although the cars are probably great, or of course great too. But everything else here is from Japanese magazines and some of it I can't really show. Um, yeah, they're just all pictures of her. But I won't. I won't show. <laughs> we won't show too much of that. But it's it's some some Japanese gentleman was a big fan of this actress who was in Thunderball, and it's like everything he could. This side is a preview of Our Man Flint. That was a lot of fun. That movie. Yeah, here's the front cover of a magazine cut off. Claudine Auger. On the other side's Jane Fonda from Barbarella. Yeah, this guy was into this actress and saved pages from um, anything she was in. You probably remember that's a famous photo from... Whoa. Yeah. Let's see, here's and the other side. You got Julie Andrews. It's like, which way do you frame it? You just almost have to make a color copy of one. And and then the other side is another James Bond girl. And there's a, uh, now apparently it says Shelley Fabre. She must have been on this page over here. But you know, and on this side, you've got The Fugitive, David Jansen. Oh, I love The Fugitive. That was a great show. Yeah, but like I said, it's just clippings from Japanese magazines of the same actress and, uh, 
think that's all of them. Let me get these into a drawer over here where they'll be safe. And uh, where's the big one? Where did I put that, man? Come on, man. Oh, boy. Oh, there's still more. <laughs> yeah. It never ends. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> it just... You got to see the movie. You've all seen Thunderball. What am I doing telling you guys to watch Thunderball? That's insanity. Um, still more. This side, you got David McCallum with one of those great men. I should. It's a man from Uncle G that he's holding. And hopefully I won't get in trouble for showing a picture of that imaginary G that the uncle agents had. Now, if this guy had saved the whole magazines, that would have been cool, but apparently he just saved these pictures. Of course, and uh, here's one on Candace Bergen. Um, I've been told that Japanese houses are very small, and so they can't, they don't have a lot of storage room. And it's just un, uh, giant amounts of clippings of her. This this guy was clearly smitten with this actress. Here's a two page oh, two page uh, spread. Thunderball. Yeah, that was the first really big budget James Bond movie. That was the one. Into that uh, was the big spectacular. Okay, what? Still more? Yeah, still more. This is a big size. Uh, this is a little bit later. See, this is when Love Story was coming out. And, uh, oh, there's still more. There's more. Yeah, he's torn out every single page. Um, Yes, indeed. Full collection of these books. But where's the one I showed you first that had the cars on the other side? Did I already put it in the drawer? I must have. Oh, shoot. This makes... This just kind of a weird way to... What do you do with a bunch of pages? Uh, no, it's not here. Dang it. What was that? Just a minute, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, how do you just... Maybe it's under the Dr. Satanicus poster. No. Here's something I've been wanting to frame for years. This uh, poster, this is a real poster. See the new and different all-girl band, the Tremolons, and then that's where you write where they're going to appear. It's 100% uh, real. You can listen to the Tremolons on YouTube. Hey, I'm starting it. Well, it has to be here somewhere. It can't have just disappeared. That's what my mom would always say. 
Here's a shaft. This is my grand grandmother on my dad's side. This is another case of an autograph picture that started to fade. It's an autograph picture to me, autographed by Betty Page, and the picture started fading, so I had to make copies of it. So the frame pictures I have are copies. Um, this is my mother there, riding a horse. This is my grandfather. Um, he was, um, uh, recruited out of, um, well, he was recruited out of high school. He played for the Yankees in 1931, the Phillies, the Cubs, um, Lefty Weinert. He's famous for, he was a left-handed pitcher. He was famous for punching out Casey Stengel. Um, this, I think, is the original of the Gene Summers. Uh, yeah, because you can see the ink kind of went through the other side. Did I put that in this drawer? Where did I? Well, it's going to be hectic next week because we had a major storm in April and smat it, and I finally had my windshield replaced and the sunroof on my car. But now, on Monday, they're going to start with the replacement of the roof and the um, siding of the house. So it's going to be something. These I got, um, I don't remember where, but they're also Japanese. This is some Japanese TV show. You might know what it is. Perhaps you can read Japanese and you can tell me. But apparently I bought it for $5 back in the 90s. And this one, I used to know the name of this show back in the 90s when I hang around, hung around with Joe Riley. I knew the names of all these Japanese superhero shows, but uh, I remember this one. This is Common Rider, and it's autographed, and uh, must be autographed by the the actor that played um, Common Rider V three. That was the name of this one. Common Rider shows were great. Um, I'm sure you guys have seen Inframan, which is. Uh, People think, well, Inframan's just a Korean knockoff of the Japanese Ultraman, but it's really, it is, but it's also a knockoff mostly of Kamen Rider and Ultraman mixed together. But I wouldn't really call it a knockoff because it becomes something wonderful on its own. This is a barf bag that came with the Rhino Records. They had a record, World's Worst Records, and this is the regurgitation receptacle. So you're supposed to vomit into this bag while you listen to those records. Um, I also have uh, um, one for the movie Mark of the Devil, which is actually something that could possibly make some people vomit legitimately what's in this envelope i have no idea Let, let's find out shall we why oh pictures of uh my brother about to jump out of an airplane my father jumped out of airplanes my brother jumped out of airplanes and a good friend of mine meyer and in, in uh, san francisco Jumped out of airplanes. 
His real name's Dave, but he goes by Meyer because he has an old comic book and someone filled out a coupon to send off for some crazy toy in the comic book, Meyer Greenblatt. And he's like, that's a great name. I'll be Meyer Greenblatt on YouTube. Here's some pictures, pictures, paintings. I found, they, I got for basically nothing at uh, an estate sale. And uh, somebody is trying to be an amateur painter. And uh, these, you know, but this one, is supposed to be Marilyn Monroe. I mean, it's not bad. I mean, the, the main problem is the eye placement. It's just not quite right. And the smile's a little bit off too. This is like Marilyn Monroe's, uh, it's like Marilyn Monroe and uh, um, Jason from Friday the 13th had a, a baby, you know. Um, oh boy. And this one, um, is another pain. This one's better than the other one, except I can't show you the whole painting. But anyway, so who is the person I don't, that painted these? I don't know, but it's cool. It's a vintage canvas. Look at the cool design on the back. And the design on the back of this Marilyn Monroe one. You know, you can just tell it's older. This is the other one. So I'm not going to paint over those. Uh, probably not going to hang them up either although the that last one i showed has the most potential to hang up except yeah it's pretty good i don't know if i've even shown that to my wife there's so much stuff here oh this is i found with a no that's the wrong poster i don't know where that poster went it's driving me mad um Yeah, this has to be my dad basically practicing for the crossword puzzles, and writing down things. That I remember him doing the crossword puzzles and he was uh, doing it. I remember he said to keep his mind sharp and everything. Oh, there's more stuff down here. What? Yeah, there's even more. How about that? Why can't I remember this guy's name? There was a friend I had back in the 90s. When did the mask come out? I remember, yeah, it was the 90s. This uh, friend of mine, this uh, girl from England, married a much younger guy, and the guy was a really cool uh, artist. And he did some illustrations for me. These are not the originals. These are copies. But I don't even remember. Oh, his, his name was Grant. I don't remember his last name. But if you're out there, Grant, this is your artwork from the 90s. And he was doing this because I was doing a magazine at the time. I think I published all his illustrations in the magazine. But I thought he was pretty good. I should put this in the Batman room. <coughs> I've got a room over here filled with Batman collectibles. This is an artist I've always liked, XNO. It's not an original drawing, it's just a copy. <laughs> If you have a 1992 Crown Victoria, here's the promotional booklet for it that would have been at the dealership. I'm not sure why I have that. Um, but 
since we have a philosophy of keeping everything here in this museum, museum slash hotel, I have that. And uh, what else will we see here? Oh, here's the original illustrations. <laughs> I found the original drawings done by that gentleman. But will I be able to show them to you? I don't know. Uh, yeah, probably. This is a illustration he did. This is original artwork. And this one, no, we won't be just looking at that, but here's the cover of a, the Dallas Morning News TV guide from the newspaper with Barbara Eden. And, uh, I Dream of Jeannie was on the air, and here's the picture of uh, Boris Karloff as Frankenstein's monster. This is a... Uh, the Inwood Theater had a Hong Kong movie festival back in the 90s, and this was a flyer for an X-Files convention in Plano, Texas in 1995. Here's a modeling sheet from the Batman the Animated Series uh, for what Poison Ivy is supposed to look like, and one for what uh, Harley Quinn is supposed to look like. All kinds of stuff. Oh, yeah, here is my grandfather. Born April 21st, 1902. He played for the Philadelphia Phillies from 1919 to 1924. Chicago Cubs in 1927 and 1928, and brief, briefly for the Yankees in 1931. So the Phillies recruited him out of high school. How about that? There's a, some pictures of him. He's not someone you would want to mess with. This is the Batman family. Here's some more of those sheets. This is uh, one to, for the animators to keep the Catwoman uh, on model. Oh, another one of those hypnotic eye flyers. I guess I have two. And this is advertising the five, six, seven, eights, which has always been one of my favorite bands. Um, Quentin Tarantino seems to just I'm not trying to sound cool, but Quentin Tarantino discovers things usually about 10, 15 years after I do. Like, um, you know, he discovered the five, six, seven, eights and put them in his movie Kill Bill years after I was listening to them. And he discovered old radio air checks and used them extensively in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, basically old recordings of radio broadcast. Um, and used, yeah. Um, and uh, what else did he discover? Oh, April, March, the song Chick Habit. He put it at the end of that uh, Kurt Russell uh, um, death proof. Here's some color copies a friend of mine made for me of some of these Erie Publications magazines that he had. Suitable for framing. Oh, I've got a whole... Big uh, Erie Publications poster book that I've got on hold at Gotham City. The more I realize I've got so much stuff on hold there, I've got to get that stuff, man. Um, anyway, this one you made a copy of, even though it had tape pulls on it, but it's still great. Since this isn't an original, you know, I could probably color, I could probably fill in, you know, paint those. Uh, this is an original flyer for um, yeah, it's an original flyer 
not from Warren. Uh, it's for uh, when uh, Harris Publications took over Vampirella when uh, they got uh, Vampirella basically at a bankruptcy sale when uh, James Warren got kind of sick in the early 80s and the magazines weren't selling well and they were looking at a um, potential lawsuit, I think, from Harlan Ellison over some story in 1994, the, the magazine 1994, 19, whatever. Anyway, this is a, they had some good artwork on the covers, Dave Stevens, in this case, Michael Kaluta, about this original flyer. What is this? Well, this, this is cool now because George Perez is no longer around. But um, when is this from? I don't think this is that old. It's the Dallas Comic Con. I didn't go to that one. I did go to this. It's uh, the um, USA Film Festival in Dallas. This was in the 90s. Yeah, it had to have been. They had a tribute to Samuel Z. Arkoff, and they showed uh, Invasion of the Saucer Men, and I Was a Teenage Werewolf, and he was there in attendance and talked to the crowd. That was neat. And this is a T-shirt design that Kirby did back in the 60s. He used to be able to get T-shirts. Um, and they made a replica of this shirt in the 90s. I've got a replica of it. I don't wear it a lot because it's so cool. I just don't, I don't want to, it's like, you ever had a shirt that's so cool you don't want to wear it because uh, it's like every time you wash it, it's going to get more faded. You start to get completely insane about it. This is the, this is the magazine I used to put out. It looked like this, the Sophisticate, the one that inspired Joe Riley to do the hypnotic guy. Here is uh Flyer for the Fuzz Tones. I forgot about the Fuzz Tones. They were really good. They were a 60s style garage rock band in the 80s. Um, I don't know about this band. I can't vouch for them, but this is a band flyer of the Modern Wigs. John Lennon Memorial Freak Out with my Three Sons, live film experience, December 8th at 500 Cafe. This would have been in Dallas. Here's Hank Ballard in the Midnighters playing at Antones in uh, Austin. Man, I look at, you know, I remember the 2915 Guadalupe. There, there was such great record stores in Austin. And there was a toy store there uh, called... Um, Atomic Toys. This is back in the 80s. Early 90s. And Austin was still kind of a, a small town feel. The capital of Texas, Austin. And it was uh, so much fun to go there. And you'd find such amazing stuff you'd never find back where I lived. But now Austin's become something completely different. And um, that's sad. This is um, advertisement. A little. This is a this is a copy, but it's. Uh, this is from 1974. They're promoting. I guess they were showing f the Flash Gordon serial, probably edited into a feature. And this is from 1974. And so I think these were probably put all around town like little fake newspapers, and. Uh, In the 70s, there was a wave of nostalgia for the 30s from people that were probably in their 40s and 50s that were kids in the 30s. So there were, there was a lot of that. This always had a great advertising campaign, Macumba Love. I'm not doing much good here organizing. I'm just uh, looking at stuff and just moving it from one place to the other.
Look at this basketball player from the 50s in Texas. Actually, yeah, 1951. Okay, but look how she's dressed. She's like, uh, <laughs> look at that. It looks like, uh, what does that look like? Minnie, Minnie Mouse or Mickey, probably Mickey Mouse. That <laughs> Mickey Mouse, and then it looks like kind of like Donald Duck's top with, it's like Donald, Donald Duck and Mickey Mouse. <laughs> That's not a very... Uh, Flattering. I don't know. Maybe it is. Who's to say it's any... I need to shut up. It's wonderful. Her name is Yvonne Kennedy from 1951. And I got all these old pictures from... You know, I don't know where they came from. Yes, I think I do, actually. I used to... Well, I probably still would if I could find them. Buy old yearbooks from different... Uh, high schools and colleges. And, and I think these were just crammed in the middle of a yearbook, all these pictures of, uh, you know, people pass away and then their family goes to the secondhand bookstore and sells all the yearbooks. And it's like, how could you sell your mother's high school or or college yearbook with all the signatures and the friends like and, and, and get enough money to maybe pay for half of a taco, uh, ta oh, not even that Taco Bell meal. Um, but some people they just don't care. You know, it's old stuff. I don't like old stuff. Who cares? Um, oh well. Oh, here's a, uh, here's a, this came with an A-OK -okay from Dr. Silver Age a few years ago. He's drawn an illustration of himself. What else we got here? This is very recent, 2020. I don't know if this is any good or not. But I really like, I hate modern comic books. That artwork's not bad. I kind of like it. Is this worth reading? I think I might have actually bought a few copies of this just because this promotional flyer at the comic shop. I mean, that, that artwork really kind of struck me. Which is why I saved it. And I like that too. Look at that. Batman and the Monster Men. Matt Wagner. Or should I say Matt Wagner? I will learn not to burn coloring book. Look at this. I know how to 911. Report a fire. Look at that excellent artwork. It's almost as good as that Batman poster I just showed you. Look how much fun they're having making a home escape plan. They are just having a blast. That is the most fun thing you could possibly do. Plan how to get out of your house. <laughs> and look. He's helping him cool a burn. And look how much fun they're having. Smiles on both faces. <laughs> because I know how to stop, drop, and roll. It's the new hit dance. How about that, ladies and gentlemen? Oh, you know, Big Daddy Roth, he, convert, he converted, he married a Mormon lady. I think that's why he converted to Mormonism or to the LDS church. I, I don't know. I may be wrong. Maybe he converted and then he married the woman. But uh, he altered some of his old T-shirt designs. This one, Wild Child. Originally, see that ice cream cone? He used to have a little straight razor. And uh, where that key is, that... 
it used to be a, a bloody knuckles, uh, a bloody, uh, um, what do you call it? Bra bloody brass knuckles there. <laughs> if I, uh, I'll, you can Google wild child and you'll see the original, but he just altered it because he didn't want to be uh, glorifying, you know, hoodlum juvenile delinquent culture. Boy, I'm, I'm going to be really excited to find out here in the next few hours whether this will successfully upload to Rumble and YouTube. And then I can, uh, I may have to transition over to Rumble. I, I'm sick of trying to, uh, especially as we get closer to the election, I'm going to want to be able to speak my mind a little bit more and not try to uh, be scared about what words I use. Rumble is a little bit more uh, free speech. It, the problem is most people have never heard of Rumble and they're never gonna go over and, and get a Rumble account. They just aren't. But maybe those people don't matter. I mean, whether they matter, but I mean, everyone matters, but you know, some people you're never gonna fully convince, right? Well, uh, I'm starving. Is it five o'clock yet? No, it's 4.15. Um, well, this is episode 1006 on YouTube, possibly episode one on Rumble. And uh, unless they have some restriction on how long a video you can upload or the first time that you kind of do it. Um, so, I don't know. Oh, did you hear my knee cracking? In that hi-fi sound? Uh, anyway. That's uh, some organization that I got done this afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, this is an old picture of the house. And it looks like it used to have kind of a white roof but now it's got kind of a copper roof. I th we thought it was actually copper, but it's metal painted copper. So that's what they're gonna replace it with. And uh, the siding is gonna be, uh, my wife picked out the color. It's gonna be uh, slightly greenish, not, not extreme green, but um, um, yes indeed. Okay, I've got to pick up these toy G's, but I don't want the camera to actually see them because these are forbidden objects that are not allowed to be seen on YouTube. So I will keep them out of sight. Okay. Oh, I was telling you about the Batman room. Let's go look in there. Oh, here's more stuff Joe Riley painted, my friend. Um, look at that. I painted the daddy model kit, but he painted this one. Look at that. Outstanding. He also painted this drag nut here. You see that? And this one. Incredible. Okay, the Batman room. We'll probably call it quits at an hour and 30 minutes. That'd be a good length, um, possibly. Yeah, they've got a special tonight at the barbecue restaurant we go to. Um, 
So I guess I'm not going to be able to stream that demolition derby when the state fair happens and because I'm banned from... Unless I could somehow convince a human being that that, well, that was not a violation of their uh, terms and services, or whatever. Well, at least I don't think it was. This was a gift from Charlton 66. Look at this Frankenstein vehicle. And uh, all kinds of wonderful memorabilia here. Joe Riley painted this alien kit. That's another one of his. He painted the Sling Rave Curvette. What else? Mm. Oh, boy. I like it when people take the Aurora model kit of the mummy and paint it blue to kind of match the box art. But it's a bunch of Batman stuff here. And I'm just walking in through. I just, I'm a cobweb. Just, there's cobwebs. And I haven't, I don't go in here that often. But I'll start. Um, this is um, signed by Dick Sprang. It's number 95 of 500 prints of the secrets of the Batcave. And I love this. And uh, I don't know what this is worth now, but. Uh, it's pro probably a lot. Uh, if John Gorris, if you're watching this, and I told you, you know, he, he's been doing a lot of Batman sketches. I said to look for the art of Dick Sprang. I think I told you that that's the guy you want to look at his art and do and, and take your style, John, and merge it with Dick Sprang. This because this is this is my Batman. You know, this is how Batman's supposed to look. And I like how he's merged the 66 TV show, movie, Bat Boat. And then, you know, you've got the different eras of the Batmobile and uh, the 60s Bat Plane. And uh, this is how you do it. You merge all the different eras, but it's just so... Fantastic. So I've always... Oh. Um, Dr. Fives and I were... Well, we were on a live stream. We were, this is my... Uh, he was talking about his... He was showing his Corgi uh, Batmobile that he got when he was a little kid. His grandmother gave him a Batmobile and Bat, bat Boat. And he said, well, I lost the Bat Boat. And... But this is mine. This was also given to me by my grandmother. And I've lost the <laughs> bat boat. But his is in better shape. Mine is, is uh, and, and this, I can't get this uh, blade to go back up. And uh, anyway, fantastic. There's a picture of Batman on the bottom. Look at that. There's a replica of this being put out soon, from what I understand. I need to come in here and dust these a uh, little bit. See, that's based on Dick Sprang's art there. So this is when Funko Pops are okay. This is an un okay Funko Pop. This... Dick Sprang era Batman with that cool Batmobile. But usually I agree, Funko Pops, you know. This is something I created. My friend Joe Riley told me about Super Sculpey, which you you could sculpt and bake in an oven and then paint. And he would, uh, those people that did all those model kits made out of resin in the 90s, they would sculpt them with Super Sculpey then fire them, and then they'd make molds of them, and then they'd make these resin kits. And so that's how I learned about that and made this uh, back in the 90s, this this kind of rat fink, big daddy Roth Batman. So that's one of a kind little thing there too. Joe Riley painted this angel fink. Um, I don't know, I 
think I'm showing you all the same stuff I showed in the what was it, last second to last video, except this one. The reason I'm showing a lot of it again is I'm thinking this might be the first episode to a new audience on Rumble. Um, but maybe I'm just dreaming, man. Maybe that's just ridiculous. Uh, but I would like to break free from this YouTube prison. There's a John Wayne movie, Jet Pilot. John, John Wayne was born real close to here. And there's a museum that I'm going to I'm gonna go film an episode at uh, the John Wayne Museum for you, ladies and gentlemen. So. I don't know. I don't know what. I don't know. So there's nothing more to see here. The party's over. Turn out the lights. The party's over. Just burn electricity and making Greta Thunberg angrier and angrier and angrier. So. Oh, shit. I knocked a chair over. I'm moving a chair. It's on wheels and it fell over. This is a Naga. Remember these things? You see all kinds of things here in the lobby of the uh, Hotel Orloff. Yeah, this memo book is... Uh, something. Okay. I don't know if that's a kind of a sign of my dad's cognitive decline and his fight against it. As a fight against um, refusal to lose his faculties, writing down all that stuff so that he could remember it for crossword puzzles. He did do crossword puzzles, and I remember looking at those and thinking, how does he know the answers to all this stuff? He's trying to keep his mind sharp. Um, and he was a good man and retired colonel from the Army. He's, um, you know, it's real easy to start to want to hear people feeling sorry for Joe Biden and his cognitive decline and and of course, you want to feel that way about someone that's elderly, but the only problem with him is he's been a bad guy his whole life. He's been a, and he's been stupid all his life, so and corrupt and a criminal. And just, then you just think, well, how about I feel sorry for someone that spent all their life being a good person or trying to be a good person, and then they're having the cognitive slipping? Those are the people I'll reserve my sympathy for. Um, anyway, you're going to vote for Donald Trump, so it, uh, it doesn't matter. So, be seeing you.